Hmm. That's a nice book you're reading. Can I get into it? Very interesting. Mm hmm. Anyway, welcome, fellow hunters, to part 12, episode 11 of my Mods Hunter World playthrough. And so, in this part, it is time to take on the most. one of the more annoying monsters in the game the Palomu. It's a flying bat slash rodent slash whatever it is. But first, after completing the Titsuyaku investigation quest, after first discovering the Coral Highlands, you can talk to the Miaskula Chef to pick up this. Feast of Fish, you just turn in 200 research points and a Gajal skin. You receive the Gajal Gill, one of the ingredients for the canteen. Next we have to hold a harvest, laid back botanist. She will give you a delivery to deliver, so which requires two aqua sacks and 300 research points. Gives you a harvest box, box upgrade. I would definitely recommend this as now you can cultivate more items basically. So, there's no story, there's no, there's no dilly dallying, no hoity toitering. It's just getting straight into the quest. Handler, I have a an annoying rodent to rodent to scutter, a pest that needs to be swatted aside. I believe you can find Palumu in around sector sector six. You could sometimes find him chilling in sector three, and around the this sector here, basically. So, a more quick check if all my items are present and accounted for. Don't ha don't have any dung pods, but. But as of this point of the story, there is nothing more <clears throat> dangerous than the Paolomu. Well, except for one beast, but I doubt with the beast flying patterns we're going to come across them. So, and this should be the area where Paolomu like, like to drop by. Oh, it doesn't look like, look like the most precious thing you've ever laid your eyes on. Oh my god! And it turns out to be a monstrous, hideous creature. So, Palomu's weak points are its head, and I want to say its wings. That's where you want to be attacking it. Basically, any part of its, any black part of its body is armoured. Or at least, it isn't. That's not its several parts. Several parts. And that is the hunting one. I'm going to show you guys how you can get your hands on one. Because last playthrough, I wasn't able to get it. And when I was playing with my friends and they had it, it, it just, it came in a lot real handy. And it really did. This is where the... So, at first, generally at first, he doesn't seem too bad with attacks, but this is where he can get a bit tricky to handle. He plates said he is a... he can fly. And plates a sack and he can do a lot of damage. Now, initially this boss doesn't seem really too difficult, and I'm, I appear a bit standoffish. But what makes this boss so annoying to do with is his ability to control wind pressure, which not only deals damage to you, but also makes you stagger a lot and essentially immobilizes you for a few breaks. And he could do this frequently. He could he backpedals and blows air <laughs> on you, which makes you stagger a lot and Pretty much takes away all your mobility, and it's really annoying. As you can imagine, it just stalls the fight and just makes it longer. Really. Just really just makes it a longer, more pointless fight. So that is why, and you've and I've actually been handling him 
too much respect to be honest with you, but it hasn't looked so bad because I've been very standoffish so far, but oh, believe you me, this boss, if you're not prepared, can be very annoying to deal with. Let's go ahead and chase him up here. Sacks to inflate it. Turn around. Thankfully, flash pods can make this fight lots easier, as you can imagine. I'm not, I'm not only missing it. So Yaku can help us here potentially by stunning us. Unfortunately, I believe the skill Windproof isn't available to us yet, so that's not going to help you. Or it will be tremendous help against this thing. And Titsi Yaku, can you please stun this thing? That'd be very helpful if you could. He did, but he, he stunned me in the process. One time I wasn't looking at him, he used his attack. Thankfully we recovered from stun a lot quicker than, quicker than they did. And that, as you can see, is... You heard the handler, the big boss around these parts, the Legiana. Beautiful creature, which we'll definitely get into the later parts of the game. I didn't want to have to see it now, but the butte, but fortunately we do it. As you can see, it's being a massive help to us. 522 damage. And the Titsi Yaku, for that matter. So, what has turned into... So, what was originally a rather eventful and slightly frustrating encounter has turned into quite an event. We have the gangs all here in the Coral Highlands. It's going to take a bit longer than I expected, but it looks like really the Legiana is doing all the work for us. Until until the Paolo Mu decided to fly away. Well, that's, that's something we don't want. Queen of the Lands on our tail. So, I'll probably be right back once I've chased away the Legiana. Covered quickly, didn't he? No, look, even though his attacks don't seem to do much damage, do not. Not underestimate it. And also, what you might have noticed what's sucking in there is trying to inflate its sack. That is one of its most deadly, deadly attacks. I've said that quite often. Yeah. 
And as you can see, monsters like to attack with no reason whatsoever and just ruin your ghillie mantle. Just like that. And that was a good demonstration of why its winds are so dangerous. Now, I forgot to mention, these, thing, these things' weaknesses are uh, thunder, to an extent, but mostly fire. Fire is your best bet against this thing. And put Midna with the, the Anjanath Hammer, I believe, which is fire element. As you can see, that likes to trap you in its wing, its, its wind blasts, and then hit you hard with, a, with its inflated sack. So that is the threat that it carries. Do not take it lightly. It's probably a good idea to get some more flash pods, but I'll see if I can make a slide or something. So, like with most monsters, you probably don't want to fight it directly from the front, from the side, seems to be, your, seems to be the way to go, underneath its body. You want to for this when it's, its, hit, it's hitbox becomes much larger when it's sacks inflated, as you can imagine, but it's also more hard to hit, so it's a bit of a trade-off. It's one of the things that also makes this fight a bit more thoughtful, then. You might expect. It's retreating yet again. This is a wet, a wet fish thing. 
Probably should have used that in battle, really. That was not the best place to use it. I think, though, the looks of things, where, where it's flying, it might be a bit injured, so... Always a good sign. If you want to know where its lair is, you can find it in Sector 9 here. All the way across the map. <laughs> Very convenient. And it should be resting right here. I wouldn't be surprised here if it decides to wake up as I'm placing barrel bombs here. Now, is there any stone around here or a pod I can use? Or a slinger I can use? No, there's not. Probably should have brought one. Probably should have picked up some stone. You know, very easy to do. Oh well. No pain, no gain! Yeah. Oh, didn't get hit. Very nice. Attack its head. Very rare you get to actually attack its weak points. If you dodge all there, you only get very little frames to do so, but if you can, then it makes things a lot easier. Now, what I like to do in its nest when it's recuperating, uh, recovering, licking its wounds, it likes to place its sack and then just fly around the fly around the facility out of range. So what I do is just wait, try and anticipate when it's next going to come in for an attack. What you can do is jump off these tendrils here and try and mount it. It actually makes things surprisingly easier. Let's see if I can't perform. And there you go, that is how you pull off a successful mount against this thing. It gets one of the hardest, or maybe not the easiest if you don't fall, uh, bosses in the game to mount, you know? Get down, you annoying bat rodents. Sling up thing. Looks like I got the jump on the bat when you, when you, when you ever see that. <laughs> And there we go. That is how you do it. <laughs> yes, that was my instinctual reaction there. And I probably could have caught it because I've got, I've got a bounty on capturing a large flying monster. So could have got a lot of, could have gotten a lot of research points and armor spheres for doing that, but. It would just it wouldn't be a hunt without slaying monsters now, would it? And there you have it, that's how you defeat the Paolumu. Just be just be a little standoffish, just try not to attack it from the front. Just be a bit a little cautious because it can trap you and then do a lot of damage. It's deceptively strong with its when it inflates its sack and pounds you on the ground. But obviously you keep your distance a bit, you use flash pods and uh keep it keep hacking at it it's not that strong and it will go down fairly quickly and that was surprisingly a surprisingly smooth hunt except for when the legiana you know you know flew by completion times decent decent enough uh nourishing extract i will definitely be going through that at some points let's just take all of it at some point in this playthrough because you can using nourishing extract it's an ingredient for a very, or a very useful item, which I will, I will show you guys very soon. And the Coral Orchestra. Once the story part is done, I will go on investigation in the Coral Highlands and show you guys how to get, how you can get yourselves a Coral Orchestra. Very helpful, very handy, uh, handy gadget. Anyway. We never bothered with a test flight, so we're going to make you our little guinea pig. <laughs> um, oh 
Okay. Sure, sure. I mean, got nothing else better to do, right? No one's more qualified than I am, you know? I would. But I don't need preparing. I was about to draw my weapon, but I forgot you couldn't <laughs> in the research base. So, just before the end of this episode, I will show you guys how you can get your hands on a coral horn. So if we take a quick expedition to the Coral Highlands. This is the fastest way, fastest way to get to where you need to go. And you simply travel to, you travel to the northeast camp and then you drop down here, way down here. And to, sec to section 10 rather. Drop all the way down and there's a small little gap which you can crawl through here. By the way, I should mention at first, let's just crawl back. Sometimes you could find little, little palicos riding shamos here, which you have to, which they will likely attack you and you have to defeat. So they're not too hard. Uh, just a little tougher than normal shamos, as you can imagine. So defeat them and you can follow them through this little gap here. Into an otherwise inaccessible area, which is area 11 with waterfalls and more corals as you can imagine <laughs> and you you can travel up the coral reefs here yeah. you can see a pathway emerging here you travel up here and then you, you go through the waterfall. Swim to the other side. You can find some honey. Some water moss. <laughs> and you could come across a group of palicos here. So can we can we talk to one? I can't remember what Grimble Keen buddy here is saying. Helps up with the investigation. So you could find this secret Palico area here, and, and a certain, I, I forget what they're called, but they're, they're an independent tribe of Palicos, and they will give you a mission where you have to slay two Titsuyakus, and along the way these Palicos will perform their coral hunting horns and give you random buffs. So attack buffs, defense buffs, you know, blight resistances, etc. And as you can imagine, that makes defeating the Titsuyaku a lot easier than it normally would. And you only have 50 minutes to do this, as usual, but yeah, I think you're fine with their help. Not only that Titsuyaku will be running scared, but you also defeat them a lot quicker than you normally would. So once you defeat, once you do that, you will, they will give you the, the coral horn, the, the hunting horn, the gadgets that your palico can utilize. Give, gives you random buffs to your attack, defense, your blight resistances, etc. Very helpful gadgets. So do this mission, it will, I think you'll find it would help you greatly. Because the Figaro spray is good, don't get me wrong. But I think it's some uh, it takes a while to it takes a while to, you know, get your palico to use the use the Figure Wasp, T O U. And sometimes it'll out, outright fail because Minda is taking damage or use or your palico rather is taking damage or using an item on themselves. The hunting horn, whilst the hunting horn, uh, your palico breaks it out, uh, just not randomly, but frequently, gives, giving random buffs. So it's a lot more functional, functional, and just all around more helpful in general. So that's how you do that. Anyway, so we have slain the Paolumu. Thank goodness, not nearly as as annoying as I thought it would be. Thank goodness. So in the next part, we are going to be investigating the depths of hell themselves, the rotten veil. Vale. And fighting a new monster, which I will not say what it is yet. So, thank you very much for watching, friends, fellow hunters. Take care, and I will see you all again very soon in the next hunt. Farewell.